and welcome back to another video where well, today we are going to be reviewing this the EFE rail class 144 ignore that it says 143 it is an actual 144 in the West Yorkshire PTE livery so then let's take a look at the box first so as we can see on the front it's didn't really give much away but then it has a huge EFE rail logo says British, Great British Model Railways on there. Obviously EFE is part of the Backman branches. Well, and by branches I mean like the cooperation of companies of them, like Graham Farish. So you've got uh, Backman's website link there. Tells you the scale, 1 in 76, which is double O. If we just move to the side, this will give us a better indication of what we've got today. As you can see, it says class 144, two car DMU. It's numbered 144003. And it's in the BR West Yorkshire PTE Metro livery. On the back, as we can see, we've just got some things from EFE themselves. Talking a bit about them, you know, about their quality models. To the link again, the Collectors Club of Backman. And then the authentically detailed model section here, telling you if it's suitable for children or not. On here, yet again, we've just got the logo, Great British Railways, etc. So then, let's open it up and see what we get inside. It's a very simple opening. Just slide it up, these two tabs either side. As we can see straight away, we've then got the EFE class 143 slash 144 paces owner information. At the start here, we've got a, a welcome for a bit, basically they're saying thank you for purchasing the, this train. And underneath we've got accessories, which it comes with two BSI couplers, which are two BSI couplers, which are the standard DMU looking ones. They don't work, they're only basic, or as they call them here, dummy ones. But you do get two standard tension lock couplings if you want to couple up the DMUs that way or just leave them how they are. Running in, it says you should run it in for about 30 minutes in each direction at about half its speed. And then lubrication, as you can see here by these two diagrams here, those are the oiling points to help obviously lubricate the gear in to make sure it doesn't lock up. Then this is quite an important thing here, the coupling and uncoupling. Now with this uh, 144 on, well, same on the 143, as we may have seen in the, if you've watched the 158 review, which I'll link it there, um, you've got these pins here, uh, which basically means you don't need to have two chips, one in each unit. It just sends the electrical power through these pins here to the other unit. It does also have a plastic connector bit here, so that just slots in underneath and the pins just go across the top. If we just open this up to have a bit more of a see, we've got the lighting switches, which you would use if you're using the standard, if it's like not DCC. And then underneath, We've got DCC decoder and sound fitting for how you can fit sound or a different chip in this. It's pretty simple. Basically, you remove this cover here, this panel here. Well, one screw just here. Well, it's over there on this, but you remove that. You are then revealed to be that with this, which is the blanking plug, of which it is a Next 18 one. You just remove that, replace it with your uh, standard chip or whatever you're going to fit it with, and then just repeat backwards, inputting on the cover and etc. We do have a grey box here talking about sound fitting. Uh, mine is actually sound fitted with the lock sound sound in it, so we will get to testing that later. So moving on, we've then got the warranty, which is obviously if you happen to break it, the retailer may or may not replace it. 
Uh, this product says it currently has a 12 month uh, date of purchase against faulty materials, so if anything breaks within 12 months, we can send it back and get it either repaired or swapped out. Then we've got the very complicated and complex um, parts diagram showing you all the different parts and how they assemble or whereabouts they are on the units themselves on the DMS and DMSL. We've they obviously list, if we just zoom in there, they list all the different parts with numbers for each little section of diagram. And there is two pages of this for both the different types of ends of unit. And that's it for that. We'll then just remove this form. We'll just take a look at this. And there you have it. That is the West Yorkshire Metro Class 144. There. Yeah. Right, I'll get these out of the box and we'll take it out of the box and let's take a closer look at them. So, we'll pick up the DMSL first. And already, as you can see, the detailing on this is just exceptional. We've got so much detail on this. We've got this separately fitted lamp iron just here at the front. As you can see here, the dummy coupling for the standard units I have already fitted. But it does look quite detailed for just a plastic moulded one that isn't meant to be used or anything at all. It's a bit of shame that they're not being used yet as proper couplings, but obviously the technology mustn't be there yet for that. As we can see, we've got down here the horn grill. So that's where the horns would be situated just behind here. Moving on, we've then got a bit of information there, probably about the unit. Well, not probably, it will be about the unit, but it'll be like information regarding like maximum speed, maybe the weights, etc, something like that. We've got the number of the unit here, 144003, printed nicely there on the front. We've got separately fitted windscreen wipers here. Oh. Separately fitted windscreen wipers there on this nicely glazed windscreen all the way around. Now a bit of detail there in the cab, nothing painted but gives a good representation. And obviously the two nice seats inside there. We've got the hazard warning symbols on the front, signifying overhead electrics above. And then the destination display just there. This one displays Skipton, the other unit displays Leeds. Moving on to the side, as we can see, the livery on this thing is impeccable. EFE have done a great job in replicating this classic livery from West Yorkshire. As we can see, we've got the nicely printed on British Rail logo there on the cream. We also have really nicely done doors which have separately fitted handrails running down there and down the middle as you can see i think they're separately fitted handrails with inside the doors there as well those yellow ones you got a bit of painted detailing on the underframe there with those uh blue pieces there i'm not quite sure what they are but they're just in there next to the springs on the bogies as we can see two wheels here two wheels there can just imagine the uh, British Rail high speed freight uh, vehicle. That's what these were based off. Yet again, the nice livery here of the logo there, the Metro Trains. And then each window does come with no smoking signs on every single one. And as you can see, we've got just some seats in there. It's not the most detailed interior, but it does the job. Moving down here, we can see the toilet there, which is the greyed out window there at the back. This is the only unit with the toilet, hence why it is a DMSL. Uh, we also got the number of the unit there, 55826. So this one is numbered 55826. This end, that one will be numbered differently. Spinning round, we can see the this plastic clip there. And that's where the pins on the 
other unit will slot in there. Uh, nicely painted exhaust there on the back. Obviously, you need them because, you know, they all had exhausts. That's where all the fumes go. It's nicely that it's been depicted in a nice silvery colour. Obviously, it is only plastic, as most of this is. But it does make a huge difference compared to if they'd just done it black. That would be not only wrong, but it would just mean it wouldn't look as good. Yet again, more information down there about the unit. I can't quite read it, it's that small, but... As you can see down there, 144 DMSL. So yeah, the units are extremely detailed. Um, I'll just show you the other end. It's basically the same, just without a toilet, if I just show you down here. I've said there's no toilet in this. However, a key feature with the Pacers is uh, they had doors either side at the cab end, but then at the gangway end, you only had it on one side. So when they're both coupled up, if you want to get out this side, uh, this side where my hand is, you have to get out this one. This side, you have to go across to the other unit and get out. Let's take a look at the back so you can just see the pins. It's uh, just eight pins there that you'd have to slot in. And you just simply connect it into the other unit like that. So yeah, let's put this on the track. Uh, test the sounds, because I've got lock sound in it. And then give it a bit of a run. There is the unit down on the tracks. Now, with this lock sound, I haven't actually got uh, a little sheet with me. So, I don't I exactly know what the sounds... Well, no, I know what the sounds are, but... I don't have a list to definitely say what every single one is or how many there are. So we're just going to go through the functions. I believe it's from 1 to 20 and we'll see what comes up. Uh, zero, we've got the headlights, which you won't be able to see, but um, one end has tail lights, the other end has the white lights and lights up the destination board. Change directions, the other end changes, tab B, the one with the lit up destination board, etc. Uh, one is the engine noise startup. Two is the horn, and three is the counter horn. So there we go, we can do two tone horns. Four, doors open. So you press it once, it makes the door open and close. Press it again to cancel it, it does the door close and it has the hustle alarm there which is that beeping noise. Five. That sounds like brakes or something like that releasing. Six, yet again another door opening noise. This time without the hustle alarm. Seven sounds like a bit like a compressor noise. Eight. There's this weird noise that I'm not quite sure of. Nine. Doesn't do anything. Ten. Guard's whistle. Just play it again for you. Eleven. Eleven is guard's buzzer. So you do 11 once to do the first buzz from the guard to the driver. 
You turn it off to cancel it on the controller and it does the driver back to the guard. 12. Sounds like more of a, a compressor this. Fourteen. Nothing. So, uh, F, fifteen, sixteen, and seventeen are three um, ones where it talks. Well, informations. So the driver base. Well, the guard says. Welcome on board this service to, I think there's Sheringham, Norwich and Lowestoft. It's a bit hard to hear over the noise of the engine. It's a bit bit of a muffled. It's not, not the best quality of speaking, but, you know. 18 then. There's nothing. 19. Cab light. So whichever one's the lead-in unit, so if I change... As you can see, the cab light changes depending on which is the lead end. And finally, 20 interior lights. That is a really nice feature that the lights flicker turning on. I don't know if that was intentional or if that was part of the design, but from my experience from seeing trends, you know, turning on lights, or especially buses, you know, which these things are based off. Not, not more so the 142 than the 144, as these were the revised better versions. But they do have a, a flicker to the lights when turning them on. So then, let's get this thing tested and seeing how, what the noise sounds like when it revs up and moving, etc. So, as always, we will start on speed step 14. Which, as you can see, is very smooth for speed step 14. Let's bring it back then. But you can hear all the brakes release. Nice demonstration there of if you're going decently fast enough and you're braking with the unit. To come, well, braking, bringing it to a stop. You do hear the nice brake squeal of the unit as it comes to stop, which these things were notorious for. Not only for squealing round the sharp corners or any bend, really, because of the only four wheels on per unit, you know. These things had a lot of brake squealing when even just coming to a stop, you know. The wheels just love to squeal all their life. We just change it now to speed step 28. As you can see, there is a bit of a, a jud as it starts, but it can do such an amazing slow speed without even a stutter. As you can see, the unit runs perfectly. We just bring it back now. I love that the brakes do release every time it's about to start up. It's not a button you need to press or anything like that. And finally, speed step 128. Let's bring it back. As you can see, that's the slowest it will go. It's on speed step 1 to 8 now, on speed 2 on the controller. As you can see, it's going very nicely and slowly. Let's bring it back into full view now. So 
So then, uh, let's get this thing ringer, running around the layout then. And uh, thank you very much for watching. Uh, obviously, uh, if you are new to the channel, please do subscribe. Uh, thank you all for subscribing. We've had a great number of subscribers recently, especially thanks to the recent layout update. But that's it for me, guys. And thank you very much for watching. See you in the next video.